Welcome everyone to the Roy Morgan Government webinar. Today we're going to be looking at how Australians rank our nation's most trusted and most distrusted governments, government services and political parties. But let me kick off by introducing social scientist Dr Ross Honeywell. Welcome Ross. Thanks Michelle. And as it transpires, this webinar really couldn't be more timely. The federal government's approval rating is dropping, the Prime Minister's better PM rating is falling to new lows. And Forget that, Ross. If an election had been held last week, the federal government would not have been returned. Yep, absolutely right. And just last week, Gladys Berejiklian resigned as Premier of New South Wales for really what looks like a classic case of moral blindness. Yes, the Berejiklian scandal is interesting for us at Roy Morgan because when you look at it through the lens of trust and distrust, it's going to be fascinating to see how it plays out. Her polling numbers went up and down during the COVID crisis, but now she's leaving in disgrace. Her distrust score will go through the roof. Yeah, and usually disgraced state political leaders tough out any scandal. Uh, they're really good at it and yep. re-emerge as, as federal politicians or they get out of politics entirely and go to boards or they head up NGOs. But really, her levels of distrust will make it hard for Gladys, Gladys Berejiklian to launder her reputation, I think. Yeah, I, I think so too. That's the crucial difference between an absence of trust yeah. and distrust, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, you can survive. You can actually survive on really low trust or even no trust. But once you're distrusted, you're in real trouble. And distrust is hard to reverse and it's almost impossible to shake off. And, you know, another phenomenon that's happening globally is the, the petrol crisis in Britain with, with no drivers to fill the bowsers. And I hear you asking, how is this relevant to today's session? Well, it's fundamentally a trust problem. And it all really started with Brexit. During the vote to decide if Britain would stay or leave the, the European Union, millions of disaffected post-industrial battlers who knew nothing about politicians and really didn't care so so distrusted institutions like the government that they grabbed the opportunity to show their loathing and voted to leave the EU. And you'll remember that disinformation was just everywhere. Oh, absolutely. And, and they wanted foreigners out. They wanted to smash the government for abandoning them. They wanted their old Britain back. But they didn't do it politically. They didn't do it ide ideologically. And they didn't even do it because they thought it was the right thing to do. They did it because they hated the government. Uh, actually, they did it because they hate all governments. Yep. And this was not just a lack of trust, was it? If you have low or no trust, you can kind of hope things will get better. But if you distrust institutions like the government or the EU or the presidential elections in the US, you just want to smash the yeah, system. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. And paradoxically, these are the very people most hurt by the cost of Brexit, like no petrol in their cars, no food on their supermarket shelves, and no lorry drivers to replenish supplies because drivers from the EU can no longer come in and out of the UK without applying for visas. And they either can't get a visa or they can't be bothered. Yeah, in the commercial arena, if you're distrusted, you lose customers, yeah, right. you lose investors, you lose market value. Just look at AMP. It's a big deal. But at a governmental level, it can have even more dire consequences. This can quickly escalate into an existential crisis. And, you know, if we don't start sharing our slides soon, we're going to have an existential crisis of our own. Well, let's go. So Abraham Lincoln, the first conservative president of the United States, said, the people, when rightly and fully trusted, will return the trust. Sounds like a rallying cry for Donald Trump. But then Barack Obama said, if the people cannot trust their government to do the job for which it exists, that's to protect them and to promote their common welfare, all else is lost. Yes, trust is truly the common denominator, isn't it? But as we've been discussing, it's distrust where our pain and sense of betrayal really come to the surface. 
Now, just a bit of housekeeping as we get into this. The next couple of slides show data from the Roy Morgan Risk Monitor up to August of this year. This is a totally unprompted and open-ended continuous survey that gives more than 20,000 Australians each year the opportunity to nominate commercial and non-commercial brands that they either trust or distrust. And it includes around 20 governments or government services that people have mentioned out of the blue, like the federal government, the tax office, Centrelink, CSIRO, Medicare, state governments, the police, and many more. So when we look at all of the industry sectors, we see that industry sectors to the left on this graph have a net trust score, and those to the right have a net distrust score. These net scores are calculated by taking a trust score and subtracting the distrust score. We just net them out. So what we see here is that on average, Australians have more distrust than trust for governments and their services. And, and look at that, they're more distrusted than property developers, yeah. gambling, even pharmaceutical companies. It's extraordinary, isn't it? But the real question is obviously, how did that pan out? How did that net trust track during COVID? Mm. And, and this um, graph shows just how distrusted governments and government services are as we emerge from COVID, with distrust at its worst level in two years. Just a quick reminder how these charts work. The green columns are trust scores and the red columns are distrust scores. And finally, the black trend line is the net score. And we also ask people why they trust or distrust the organisations they nominate. And they can say anything they like. We get their own words. So we're able to reveal that over the past two years, there's been a 65% drop in Australians saying they trust government services because they behave ethically and have integrity. On the other hand, over the same two-year period, there's been a 73% increase in Australians saying they distrust government services because they lack integrity or are unethical. Now, before we get more deeply into our risk monitor findings, data from Roy Morgan Single Source since the global financial crisis reveals a fascinating inverse correlation between Australians distrusting the government, that's the red line there, and believing that the government's doing a good job running the country, that's the blue line. Now, normally when we have a major crisis, like a world war or a GFC or a terrorist event, any of these really big major crises, support for the party in power or the government of the day generally increases. Distrust falls away and the sense that the government's positively in charge goes through the roof. But then when the government lets us down, we turn on it. That's when we feel betrayed, angry, and foolish that we trusted too much. What's really interesting about this slide is the, the change in sentiment that happened right around the time of the um, Brittany Higgins mm. uh, rape in Parliament House allegations, um, the furor around Christian Porter's historical rape allegations, the, the criticism that um, the Prime Minister Scott Morrison was ignoring the abuse of women. Distrust flared. If you look at that, yeah. there was an equal and opposite impact on the belief that the government was doing a good job of running the country. Yep, distrust has a huge impact. Now, another really disturbing finding from our single source data, and, and this single source survey interviews 50,000 people each year over many, many decades. And what we've seen over many decades is that once COVID hit, and governments had to act quite forcefully, we witnessed a 26% increase in Australians believing that freedom is more important than the law. Now, that's a question that we've asked at least since I was at Roy Morgan in 1983. I've never seen it that high. Um, you know, I suppose this explains the so-called freedom rallies and recent riots in Sydney and Melbourne. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure it does. But, but I don't think it's just COVID. If, if you look at the rise that was happening uh, you know, before COVID. So I think it really reflects the, the impact, even here in Australia, of the Trump phenomenon. It, it plateaued briefly, if you can look at that slide, um, briefly with the shock of the capital insurrection around the timing of that. But then it got on the move again. So we were a bit kind of shocked by that and, and pulled back a bit. But then it's just taken off again. 
But Ross, it's almost 30% of Australians believe freedom is more important than the law. So whatever its cause, this yeah. is a really disturbing trend that the, you know, the rule of law matters less than personal freedoms. And we believe it's all about trust and especially about distrust. Okay, so it's time to reveal the findings from our government risk snapshot survey. And this was conducted just a couple of weeks ago between the 14th and the 19th of September, to be precise. So let's look at the net trust score ratings. Unsurprisingly, brands and institutions connected with health and protection are ranked highest as we continue struggling with the impacts of COVID. Health is in top position with Medicare, ambulance, fire and police services and hospitals all in the top 10. And the real surprise is to see the Australian tax office ranked number four. Maybe it's the, the halo effect of the ATO, ATO paying all those JobKeeper payments into people's bank accounts. <laughs> the other interesting one is the CSIRO. We've had so much dif disinformation about facts and truth and particularly about science recently, that it's it's just genuinely comforting to see Australia's top scientific research organisation being so trusted by everyday Australians. Mm, it, it is. I should mention, Ross, the ATO isn't universally loved, <laughs> and that raises an important point. These rankings are based on net trust scores, and while we only reveal actual scores to clients, the next few slides show how the relationship operates between trust and distrust. So if we just look at trust scores, these green bars, you can see just how trusted the health system, Medicare and the ATO and the police are. But pretty much everyone else measures trust. Mostly things just look at trust. So normally this is where the story would end. But look now how the game changes once we measure distrust. Just look at the distrust in the ATO and police. Their net trust scores, those black dots, would be so much higher if they had less distrust. Yeah, Medicare still looks good, uh, with way more trust than distrust, though. Um, what, what do Australians say about Medicare, Michelle? Well, essentially they say a whole range of things, but customer service and being there to help when you need it are the dominant themes that come through in the individual responses. Medicare is also seen as being ethical. Oh, well, that's rare, particularly well, rare in the government area. It, you say it as if it's a surprise, but it is rare. It is. On the dark side of the coin, Australians distrust Medicare, and this is really important, when its staff are unfriendly or unhelpful or don't have the necessary information or knowledge to assist them. Is it similar for the ATO? Similarities, it's pretty similar on the trust side, but interestingly, like banks that also deal with our money, the ease of use of the system, especially the online system for the ATO is important, as is the belief that if there's an error, it will be fixed. But the reasons for distrusting the ATO are to do with being sneaky, withholding important information, giving the big guys favourable treatment while going after the little guys and treating them badly. Yeah, well, that sounds fairly intuitive, doesn't it? But it's really great to have some data science uh, behind it all. Um, Michelle, can we take a look at the rankings of the distrusted organisations now? Sure. It's a pretty interesting list. So the Australian <laughs> government is way more distrusted than it's trusted, and it's head and shoulders above the rest. Unsurprisingly, Centrelink at number two is also deeply distrusted. It looks like pretty much all politicians and political parties are distrusted by Australians. But how do the trust schools look? Yeah, look at that. Politicians as a class have zero trust. I think that's really fascinating. And look at st state governments. That shines a new light on the perennial debate that we should only have a national government and local governments and get rid of state governments. Interesting that the federal government and Centrelink have quite high levels of trust. And this is where the distrust scores are going to be so important. Yeah. And there we are. Look at how distrust is dragging the net trust score, the black dots, down for the Australian government and Centrelink. Yeah, and that's moderating my enthusiasm for state governments, isn't yep. it? <laughs> what I think is really disturbing about the federal government, though, Michelle, is the, the level of distrust that they have 
and the correlation between trust in government and vaccine success. You mean globally? Globally, yeah. In mm -hmm. Scandinavian countries, for example, high trust in governments led to really high vaccination rates. Yeah. And if you take the opposite to be true, this level of distrust in the Australian government could make getting that last 10 or 15 percent of the population vaccinated, you know, that crucial number, yeah. it could make it really, really difficult. Really important time. And there's quite a big difference between the Liberal and Labor parties. The ALP has an almost neutral net score, but the Liberal Party has much more distrust than trust. Maybe the deep distrust of a coalition government nationally is impacting the Liberal Party. Um, what, what do Australians say about the Australian government? Many things. <laughs> it's interesting that so much of the distrust is issues related. Climate change, Brittany Higgins, the toxic culture around women, Christian Porter, and the COVID-related, particularly in relation to the vaccine rollout. Yeah. Also a failure of the Prime Minister to own his mistakes. And what about just, just before we go on, yeah. it's really important, these issues, when we look at our question that we always ask, what are the most important issues facing Australia and the world? It's covid climate change and these issues around women. So these are not issues that you want to be distrusted on. What about Centrelink? How are they going? There is a deep sense that Centrelink is incompetent or at least not fit for purpose, not a good place to be. And the robo-debt scandal keeps surfacing. You know, there are some issues that are generational or even intergenerational, and I won't be surprised if kids grow up distrusting Centrelink for what happened to their mother or their grandmother, or even their great-grandmother during the robo-debt fiasco. Yeah. This one is going to keep on giving. So that brings us to a close on this, our first government webinar. Thank you, Ross, for another lively discussion. And finally, if anyone would like to ask a question or get a copy of this presentation, simply email us at askroymorgan at roymorgan.com. And until next time, stay safe.